Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what I'm going to show you is one of the Sisters of Battle from the Order of the Sacred Rose. And this is a pretty quick method for getting them painted up. It's not perfect, but there are also a couple of steps you could skip to shave a little bit more time off. I think this represents a pretty good blend between the time taken and the result that you'll have. So we'll keep things nice and quick. All of the paints will be listed in the description below for this one. Let's get started. So no great surprise, when it comes to painting a white miniature, I've primed her with a spray of white scar. Now the white primer that you use isn't really terribly important in this case, uh, but the trick with white primer is always to do it in short, light coats. Um, same as painting with white, if you try and just blob it on in one go, it's not going to look very good, probably won't cover terribly well. So instead, a light spray, you'll see some of the, the bare plastic underneath still shining through, but give it a couple of minutes and spray it again. All right, it's always going to be better to take your time, get a nice smooth finish versus just and uh, filling in all of that detail. The very first thing we're going to do with the armor is to shade it. And what I've got here, this is the wonderfully named Marine Juice. Uh, what this is, this is a mix of equal parts, known oil, Reichland Flesh Shade, and Lamian Medium. And that third part's really the important one here. This stuff's mixed up using the old shades, uh, but it will work just the same with the new shades. The Lamian Medium is the kicker. It's what's going to change the flow properties so that it basically does what we want. This is a dark kind of red. It is just off black, a little bit warmer than Agrax Earthshade. Uh, Targor Rage Shade, that one of the new ones, is kind of similar, but a little more purple. So you can experiment. And if you don't want to go to the trouble of mixing, just thin down some Agrax Earthshade instead. What I'm going to do, though, is load up my brush. And this is, I mean, nice pristine white primer. We're now going to sully it immediately <laughs> with this stuff. But make sure that you are really working it into the recesses. Uh, anywhere that you miss, it is going to absolutely glow by comparison. So instead of concentrating on the armor, you know, really we're going to paint the whole miniature in this. So once this has had a coat of the marine juice, we'll leave it somewhere nice and warm for about half an hour to dry. Now once that has dried, you'll see we've got a ton of shading. And it has darkened down the armor a little, but maybe not as much as you might think. Now, the medium really helps there. Now, in particular, on areas like the cape and such like that, it's going to work as kind of a guide for how we might want to highlight later. But for now, what you could do is to go ahead and grab yourself some white scar and you know layer up the armor again, make it a little tidier. But I'm going to concentrate on the fast method. So I've got Praxity White. And this is a makeup brush. This is, what is this? A Lux pencil. Uh, go grab yourself a set of makeup brushes. They're absolutely the best thing for dry brushing. And part of the reason why we have shaded the cape in particular is that now I can dry brush that and get an idea of what I'm going to leave behind before applying it to the armor. So you'll see I go over the same area a few times. We're going to build up that white. And in that way, it's not going to look quite so chalky, and we still have all of our nice shading. So take your time here. And what we're going to do is dry brush up the higher areas so that they are a slightly tidier white. So paying attention to the helmet, the shoulder pads in particular. And away we go. All right, now we've got white armor. It's not perfectly smooth, but when we varnish this later, a little bit of that graininess is going to disappear. Uh, it's not perfect, but that's not what we're going for. Like I said, speed is the key here. So to that end, what I have is contrast. This is Blood Angels Red. Uh, you could instead use Evil Sun Scarlet or something similar, particularly for the, for the cape. Uh, but I'm doing this now because applying the red... Uh, it will be easier to cover over this with a traditional black acrylic when we paint in the outside of the cape. So keep your brush moving in the same direction as much as possible, because you get a much smoother finish as a result. So what I'm going to do now is carefully uh, paint in the red bits. I'm going to try and avoid splashing this onto the white. 
If I do, eh, not a huge problem. I can just go back with some white scar if I have to. Now for the lenses on her helmet, I'm actually going to use Baal Red. I find this doesn't dry quite as intense and dark as Blood Angel's Red does. Uh, but if Blood Angel's Red is all you've got, you can use that. Just going to dot that in carefully. Now one of the wonderful things about the Order of the Sacred Rose is that this uh, corset thing that she's got around her waist, uh, they stay white, so you don't have to fight to get up under there with a brush <laughs> past this point. What I'm going to use for the black, this is actually Black Grey from Vallejo. And if I get her shot there, I think you'll see why. Um, I've watered this down maybe two parts paint to one water. You'll see the coverage on this is just magnificent. Now it's not a true black, uh, but it gives us a little bit that we can do with it when we shade it. So I'm going to paint this on uh, all of the black bits. So her tabard and her gloves at the front. Now all of that is one coat of black grey. So you can use Corax black if you want to, Corvus black rather, uh, but like I said, the coverage here is really what you want. And if you can spend less time and fewer brush strokes on a miniature, the less likely you are to make a mistake. So something else to bear in mind there. For this leather on her pistol holster, I'm going to use Rhinox Hide. This is mostly because it's got a little bit of a reddish warmth to it that something like uh, Thondia Brown or Dryad Bark doesn't have. And uh, I think that'll tie in quite nicely with the red. Give us just a little bit more there to look at. Now when it comes to the metallic details, I'm going to paint these in two stages. What I'm starting with is the functional stuff, because you've got the functional and the decorative, basically. Functional stuff like her bolt gun and this deeply bopper around her neck. I'm going to paint this with lead belcher. Now over white, you may find you need to do two coats of this so that it stays nice and solid. Uh, but kind of weirdly, the dry brush that we did earlier, it gives us something that the paint will actually key onto. But one way or the other, away we go. We're going to cover this as we need to. And then for any decorative parts, I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel, which is slightly lighter. If you do want to use just one color for all the metallic, this is what I would suggest, because from here, you can shade it differently or you can highlight it differently. But I like starting from a different color because it'll give us a little more visual interest on what is quite a plain color scheme. Now that is the point as well where you're going to want to dot in all of the buttons. Uh, it is not entertaining, but it will look fantastic. And the bonus here as well is that you'll be able to tidy them up if you make a little mistake. Just go back to your base color for the cape. We're now going to apply the final one of the base coats, which is going to be Retributor Armor. And any of the gold details, basically, you can just blast this straight over the top. Now at this point, if you've got any tidy up that you want to do, you can cruise around with your base paints and fix any little mistakes. But don't, don't overthink it. Uh, sometimes, you know, these little bits tucked away where you're not going to see them very clearly, you can just leave them, especially if you're painting a big army like this. We'll move on now and shade her, and I'm going to use non-oil on all of the other base coats that we've just applied. So straight over the metal, over the gold as well, over her gloves and cape. I'm going to avoid the red, uh, but everything else that we've just done is going to get a coat of non-oil. You'll probably want to swap between a couple of brushes. You can start with the, the larger shade brush, uh, but I like the control. I'm going to apply this with a layer brush for most of it. Now that is a painted system. We've got a little bit more volume to the black and the metallic stuff is all done nice. We put her on the table and play some games. But as always, let's take it just a little bit further. What I've got now is Eshin Grey and we're going to add just a little bit more to the black. What we'll do is grab some of the high points on the miniature and don't worry too much if you're not getting a perfect straight line. Let's bulk it out a little bit because as this dries, it will darken down just a fraction more. So it's not perfect. You're not really going to notice too much. Now the wear of highlighting a cape is really down to a little bit of practice. Just whatever you think looks good. 
Now on camera that is going to almost disappear, but I swear you see that a little bit more uh, in reality. What I will do though is get some storm vermin fur and I'm just going to dot in uh, the backs of her knuckles and maybe a couple edges on the black just to accentuate that difference a little more. Uh, again, something you could very easily skip, but I do want to show you how you can go from you know, very quickly speed painted to just adding a couple of nice little spots here or there, and uh, it will elevate the look. So we've built in there a little bit more shape, and that looks pretty cool. Very quick to do as well. What I'm going to do now is grab some Stormhost Silver and some Liberator Gold, and I'm just going to add a few little dings on the decorative stuff. The bolter itself I'm going to leave nice and dark. So just tiny little dots of this uh, to sharpen up those decorative silver bits. And we'll do the same thing with the Liberator Gold. Come back and have a look at that. All right, then that's it. All I'm going to do now is take her outside and varnish her. Now ordinarily I'd suggest a matte, but this time I'm actually going to go for Munitorum Varnish, which has a very slight satin sheen to it. What that's going to do is smooth out some of the chalkiness from the dry brushing. It'll look quite nice. I always like it for power armor. I'll chuck a very simple base on her, and the recipe for that will be in the description. Let's get a look at what she looks like when she's all finished. And there at last, our Sister of Battle from the Order of the Sacred Rose is complete. Now, if you put down a whole army like that, they're going to look fine. This isn't something where you're looking for the most precise way of doing things, but honestly, that's pretty quick for the result that you're going to get out of it. If you do want to go even faster, what I might recommend would be using something like Black Legion or Black Templar for the cape and the other black details. I don't think you'll get quite as smooth a result. You won't have as much control where the highlights are going to appear, but it'll be quicker and it will end up looking black. So you can't go wrong there. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Andrew, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, you feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.